Dear students, this lecture is about the introduction to the fasteners. I, Dr. Balraj Singh Brad, Associate Professor, Yadvindra College of Engineering, Talwandi Sabu, Punjab, India, will be delivering a talk on it. Definition of fasteners. Till now, in the strength of materials and machine design, we have learned how to find the stresses in a part and how to make it safe. And in the process, a part is designed. Now, every machine is made up of hundreds or often thousands of parts. For example, an automobile may have more than 16,000 parts. This necessitates that the different parts are joined together to form different type of joints like sliding joints and fixed joints. Sliding joints are like a connecting rod and a crank pin, a shaft and shaft bearings, the presence of sliding joints is exclusively dictated by machine kinematics and is more a topic from theory of machines. Continuing with the definition of fasteners, the second type of joints are known as fixed joints and commonly known as fasteners. Now these fixed joints are employed to split the machine into or a machine assembly into units or, a comp or components and the components or the units are further split into parts and elements. To, and in the reverse order, different parts and elements are joined together to form component or a unit of a machine and then different components are joined together to make a, a machine assembly or a machine itself why is the need what is the need of to split the machine it is to facilitate or for the reliability of machine from manufacturing point of view because it is easier to produce simple different parts and it, it is not necessary that all the parts are to be made in house some can be outsourced too and then these simples join together to make complex assemblies sometimes the machine itself is too big that its transportation becomes difficult so the machine is designed in such a way that it can be disassembled into parts and these parts can be joined together at the place of installation moreover any machine requires periodic maintenance over its period of usage and maintenance necessitates that the parts the part which needs repair should be removed or disassembled, repaired, refitted or a new part is fitted into the machine. So this all this requires proper design of fasteners. Fasteners, fixed joints of machine elements are classified as into mainly three categories permanent joints, semi-permanent joints, detachable joints. Permanent joints are welded joint, braced joint, soldered joint, adhesive bonded joint, joint by interference fit, expanded joint, semi-permanent joints are like riveted joint, detachable joints are threaded joint, cotted joint, pin joint, key joint, keyed joint, spline joint, 
<coughs> and other shaped joints. Permanent joints, these joints do not allow a work to be disassembled without destroying the connecting components. Used in locations where they either do not increase weight of the work at all or the increase in weight is negligible. So for lighter parts, the permanent joints are preferred though when we want to disassemble it, some damage to the components or the parts will be there. These joints can be made by mechanical methods, for example, welding, welding, brazing, soldering, adhesive bonding, interference fit, and expanding. Semi-permanent joints, if the joint or fastened element is such that joint can be opened or separated with marginal damage to any one of the joint parts, then this joint is known as a semi-permanent joint, like riveted joints. When we want to disassemble a riveted joints, rivets will be broken and the plates, two or more plates will be now separated, though there will be a slight damage there may be a slight damage to the plates, but these plates can be re-riveted to make a joint again. Detachable joints are the third classification of fasteners. These joints allow the disassembly of a unit without damaging the fastened elements and the connecting components. Types are threaded joints, pin joints, cotter joints, key, splined, and other shaped joints. Now let us discuss individual joints, first permanent joints, and the first joint which is welded joints. Welding is an operation whereby two or more parts are united by means of heat, or pressure or both. It is usually used on metals and thermoplastics. Figure shows two steel parts welded together. The two metals must be similar. This is the necessary condition in, for welding. For example, copper cannot be welded to steel. And Sometimes in welding, a filler metal is also used. When properly done, the finished weld is as strong as the surrounding metal. Sometimes welding joint efficiency can be more than 100%. Mainly welded joints give a lighter joint uh, relative to other detachable joints. Braised joints. Brazing joins two metals by heating and melting a filler alloy that bonds to the two pieces of metal and joins them. In this case, there is not much pressure on the base plates or materials, only filler, which is usually having a lower melting temperature than the metal pieces, is melted and it joins, it bonds the two metals together. <coughs> so, brazing can join dissimilar metals such as aluminium, silver, copper, gold, and nickel too. Flux is often used during brazing. It promotes wetting, which lets the filler flow over the metal parts to be joined. It also cleans the parts of oxides so that the filler bonds more tightly to the metal parts. Next, solder joints is also a permanent joint. Soldering is a process in which the two or more metals items are joined together by melting and then flowing a filler metal into the joint. The filler metal having a 
relatively no melting point. Soldering is used to form a permanent connection between electronic components as shown in the figure. A filler wire is being melted with the help of a hot soldering iron and filler metal is usually made up of tin or lead and in the process a wire, a copper or a circuit wire is being attached to the printed circuit board. Brazing and soldering process is same, only difference is in soldering the filler metal melts below 450 degrees Celsius as decided by the American Welding Society. Adhesive bonded joint is the process of joining two surfaces together usually with the creation of a smooth bond. As shown in the figure, a small motor is being motor parts are being joined together in which magnets are being bonded to the casing of the motor with the help of an adhesive. The adhesive may be a glue, epoxy or one of a wide range of plastic agents which bond either through the evaporation of a solvent or through curing via heat, time or pressure. Interference fit joint An interference fit also known as pre a press fit or a friction fit is a form of fastening between two tight fitting mating parts that produces a joint which is held together by friction after the parts are pushed together. In the figure, the first figure shows a mechanical assembly in which a rotor is attached to the shaft with the help of a pin passing through the hub. In the third figure, a gear is attached to the shaft with the help of a key or a tack resting on in the key seat or the keyway. In the second, there is no need of any pin or a tack or a key. It is interference fit joint in which, in which simply two tight fitting mating parts, a rotor and a shaft are pushed under a force and they make a joint which is quite strong and its strength depends upon the amount of interference fit present in the assembly. Depending on the amount of interference, parts may be joined using a tap from a ham hammer or pressed together using a hydraulic ram if interference fit is too much and more force is required. Next is semi-permanent joint, uh, if for example riveted joint. Riveting is a forging process that may be used to join parts together by way of a metal part ca called a rivet. A rivet is a soft material on one end a head is already there. It pass its leg passes through the plates to be joined together and on the other end the head is formed by forging process. In the figure it is shown that bridges are usually made by joining different girders, channels, plates together by a riveting process. Rivet a, a X to join the parts through adjacent surfaces. A straight metal piece is connected through the parts. Then both ends are formed over the connecting, joining the parts securely. Only thing is, some leakage may be there. It is slightly heavier than the welded joints, but it is cheap and it can even join dissimilar materials together. 
Now detach detachable joints or temporary joints. First is the threaded joint. Threaded joints are defined as separable joints which are used to hold two machine parts together by means of threaded fastenings such as bolt and nut. A threaded joint is shown in the figure and we are all are well versed with the nut bolt assembly to join different parts in our common life. Cotter joint. A cotter joint is a temporary fastening and is used to connect rigidly to coaxial rods or parts which are subjected to axial tensile or compressive force. One, one rod end is given a, the shape of a socket, another rod end is given the shape of spy guard, spy guard goes inside the socket and there is a common slot between them in which a rectangular cotter is put. It is usually used in connecting a piston rod to the cross head of a reciprocating steam engine. We can simply remove the cotter and separate the socket and spike at ends away from each other. Next temporary joint or detachable joint is knuckle or pin joint. This joint allows relative rotation between the two rod ends and in this a pin is used. A pin joint is a connection between two objects that allows only relative rotation about a single axis. All translations as well as rotations about any other axis are prevented. So this joint has a one single degree of freedom. One end of the rod is given the shape of fork, whereas the another end is given the shape of eye. Eye end and fork ends are brought in, uh, into mating and through the common hole, a circular pin is passed and pin is retained with the help of a collar and a smaller retaining pin. Keyed joint. A key is a machine element used to connect a rotating machine element to a shaft. The key prevents relative rotation between the two parts and may enable torque transmission. For a key to function, the shaft and rotating machine elements must have a keyway and a key seat, which is a slot and a pocket in which the key fits. In this, shaft is having a slot known as key seat. The rotor or the bore is having a rotor or the hub is having a bore and a keyway. A key, in this case a square key, is inserted inside the uh, assembly and is held parallel to the axis of the assembly or the shaft. The whole system is called a key joint. A key joint may allow relative axial movement between the parts means bore can be slided over the shaft. In, the, in this way, during the disassembly, bore is moved away, key is taken out, and now no transmission of torque will take. Spline joint is a detachable joint and is an extension of key joint Advantages of the spline joints are that very less force is required to move the rotor having female splines on it over the 
splined shaft. Splines are edges or teeth on a drive shaft that mesh with the grooves in a mating piece and transfer torque to it, maintaining the angular correspondence between them. Such a joint is called spline joint as you and is used for power transmission where the distance between the driving and driven shafts are is varying during the application say farm implements other shape joints numerous detachable joints can be designed and developed to join different types of components together here we are discussing a joint ball and socket joint which is a naturally manufactured joint or coupling such as a hip joint in which a partially spherical end lies in a socket allowing multi-directional movement and rotation this type of joint as discussed is there in the hips and shoulders once all the joints have been discussed let us discuss some preferences which are which are there in modern engineering practices preference is given to the welded brace soldered and adhesive bonded joints because they are lighter in weight adhesive bonded joints were particularly developed in aircraft industry in automob automobile industry these are used to fasten linings to clutch discs and brake bands. In general, riveted joints are employed for high production rates and for joining dissimilar materials and are cheap in construction. Much skill is also not required for riveting. Continuing with modern engineering practice, Interference joints are also widely used to join shafts with rotors of turbines. Critical components that must not sustain damage during joining or for making interference joints may be frozen to shrink one of the components, usually the shaft, before fitting. This method allows the components to be joined without force and producing a shrink fit interference when the component returns to a normal temperature. Interference fits are commonly used with fasteners to induce compressive stress around holes to improve the fatigue life of a joint as the material surrounding the hose is now induced with pre-induced with compressive stresses and the when a tensile lo load will be there net tensile stresses will be lesser in the magnitude increasing the life of the part so this lecture concludes different type of fasteners as used in machine design and their types and their definitions and with this the lecture concludes thanks